lights in um, in the session. So apparently the projector's on, but it's not projecting <laughs> the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and get started without it. Uh, today's session is is actually um, I wanted to introduce to you a tool. Oh yay! Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Are you are you kidding? Really? Okay. So this is uh, hands on but you can use any device you have. So the only thing you have in front of you is your phone. You can use your phone. Uh, I am going to share some resources with you and some links that we're going to be using as part of this. So you're going to need a QR, read, uh, QR code reader. Okay, so if you, if you have an iOS device, I recommend iNigma. So you can just go into the Apple Store, the, 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 the App Store, and download it real quickly for free. Or if you're using an Android device, you can do QR code reader on the Apple, on the, um, you know, the Play Store. So either of those will work. Uh, but today's session is really talking about, it, it's really a couple of things. It's obviously about how do you, how do you use a particular technology, you know, how, you know, something new a, new, a new tool. But the other aspect of it is, of course, there has to be a purpose behind it. Uh, and so the purpose that I'm trying to kind of propose is how is it that uh, you, know, you use technology to leverage yourself, your presence in an online or hybrid environment. Um, so when you have, uh, <coughs> so if you have a QR uh, code reader, you can go ahead and grab that link already. Uh, you can just scan it from there. From there, you may need to get up as well. <laughs> so if you need to get up, that's fine. Uh, but the basically, the basis of this session is about presence and community. How it is that you create, or at least start creating, that sense for your students? Because it is that's probably one of the most difficult things that an instructor can do in an online class, and that is create a presence when you're not really physically there with them. Uh, they're all in different physical locations, and so as a result, it's very difficult to build a community because it's a lot easier when you're in the same room than when you're not. Uh, and so the the QR code that I just uh, sh uh, that you're grabbing right now is actually to a Canva presentation. But you can also have the accessible text-based version. So if you want that as well, you can scan that one too. <coughs> but essentially, if you, if you opened up that link, and I don't want to move the screen yet until I know everybody scanned it, uh, you'll see a visual with three different items on it, three kind of columns on there. <coughs> Let me see, I think people are still trying to open it up. <coughs> so, okay, let me. No, not Canva. for crying out loud. Okay, so what you're seeing basically is three columns and you have on each column you have um, you have community, you have values, and you have philosophy. Uh, and essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to, um, let's see, check your phone, tap yes. There we go. Sorry. Every time you log into a new device, Google wants to verify that it's you. Uh, <coughs> but essentially, this is what you should be seeing. Uh, and what I've found over the years as I've been teaching online is that there are some key things that you want to tell students right off the bat in the very beginning. Um, you know, Code does a wonderful job of providing some resources and also some, some templates for you. Uh, to view in terms of how it is that you can, you know, uh, putting together an instructor introduction, uh, putting, you know, they create a little template for you so that you can do uh, a start here orientation. And so this is just one piece of that. Uh, now, what I've done is, of course, I've taken what Colt originally gave me and I enhanced it a little bit uh, because I found that my students wanted to know more about me or, or something different about me than what, you know, 
typically is generically shared. Uh, and these were the three things that kind of popped out. And these, then this is actually part of other research that has been done on communities of inquiry. Uh, but essentially is, you know, students need to know that they're joining a professional community. Okay? And so you need to define that community for them immediately because you're the leader in the community at that point. So that's the first thing you need to do. And by the way, the QR code sent you to that uh, if you weren't able to grab it. I'll, post, I'll put it back on in a minute. Uh, <coughs> they also want to know what you value okay? uh, because every class requires a particular skill set. And so in every class, you want to tell students, well, this is what I'm, I'm expecting you to do, to be able to think, to be able to do, to be, uh, you know, skills that are developed, not necessarily content knowledge, because, you know, usually it's, you well, the content knowledge, they're getting it from you or from this class, but really what skills will you require in order to be able to learn this content? So that's what the values is, what is it that you value? And then the other one is your philosophy, and oh my god, that looks horrible. It looked better on my screen. <coughs> I know, I'm violating all sorts of color coding, you know, uh, things with accessibility. But philosophy is, this is something they want to know about you too, and that is how do you feel about the learning process, okay? Because how you feel about the learning process also defines what kind of assignments they're going to see in the class. It defines the kinds of assessments they're going to have, the kinds of activities they're going to engage in. So those three things are the three things that you want to introduce to them. Now in this visual, I went ahead and created um, also uh, some startup questions for you, which basically is, in your course and your discipline, what field of experts would students be joining if your course was set in the professional world? So you ask yourself that question when you create when you start uh, thinking about the introduction you're going to give your students. So you're going to mention that. Uh, this may be a profession, a community of practice, or a knowledge field. So you want to invite them into this community in your introduction. Uh, and then, of course, the middle one is the value in your course or discipline. Uh, you know, what qu uh, student quality, skill sets, mindsets are, are valued highly and, and lead to success in the field. Uh, so these are the, the questions that you ask yourself. And then the third one, uh, is why do you, th oh my god, that's horrible, uh, design, let me see, let me do something, I think I can design, <coughs> go, um, why do you teach design instruction or create assessments in the way that you do? Uh, and so this is, this is essentially what's going to guide your, uh, your, your introduction. Now, of course, obviously, you're going to say a few more things than that. Those are the, but those are the core of what makes you build community and presence, or what got, uh, gets you started on it. Obviously, the first thing you're going to say, hello, my name is. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to be your instructor for this course, et cetera, et cetera. But those three things are the most important things you can say in your introduction. And really, it's not going to make your introduction that long. Uh, we are going to use Spark uh, to create those introductions, but before we get there, I want you to brainstorm first. I want you to actually have something to build when we get into Spark video and Spark page. Uh, so I'm going to give you another QR code uh, and see if hopefully this works. But this is a brainstorming Padlet, <coughs> and hopefully you'll be able to grab it. I'm hoping, anyway. It'll ask you for a password. But go ahead and scan that. When you open the page, it'll ask you for what's the, what's the word or what's the secret password or something. It's presence. <coughs> 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 No, presence C E, sorry. <coughs> and what you're gonna see is this. And I apologize, but it's gonna ask me to log again. If I log in again. <coughs> again. Huh. Here we go. <coughs> this one. Okay. So this is a brief brainstorming. If you're already in, actually you have the ability to type in there. Uh, this Padlet is actually a community uh, Padlet. You'll notice that the first one is community. Uh, so basically you're going to talk about 
what community you belong to and that you're inviting your students in, and then what va you value from them, and then what your philosophy is. And what I did is I started you off by writing my own. Like uh, right now I'm brainstorming my own introduction for the class that I'm gonna teach online in the summer. And so I put in as my own professional community, I'm, I'm saying that all students in this course join a community of educational technologies, because this is going to be an, uh, uh, <coughs> a graduate course in the ed tech program. Uh, and so, you know, these skills, uh, with the skills and resourcefulness to find appropriate tools to design instruction. In this community, all members are also willing to share tools and pointers for troubleshooting unknown technology. So that's the community I'm defining for them. And then what I value, what I, what I value from them is, I value creativity and the ability to view design as a canvas of possibilities. I value the intuition of an educator to recognize student need and address it in designing instruction. I value open-mindedness and the spirit of adventure when encountering new technologies and expect problem solving to come to the fore rather than paralyzing feel that rejects it. And as ed tech, you know, it, it's actually kind of important to mention this because people, you know, when they encounter new technology, some people get this paralyzing fear. <laughs> Uh, and that they need to overcome. And then finally, I mentioned my own philosophy because all my, my assignments are guided by projects and problem-based learning. I mentioned I believe in problem and project-based learning within the context of real-world applicability. I believe technology to open the doors of more engaging instruction, but only as a tool that meets learning needs and objectives. As a result, learning activities require critical thinking as a hands-on, minds-on experience, and major assessments will be project-based in order to solve a learning need. So basically, I'm saying this is what I value, so that's what I'm expecting you to do. And so <coughs> go ahead, and if you have that on your screen, uh, if you want to try out, go ahead and click one of those pluses and t start typing on there. You should be able to. So go ahead and take a couple of minutes. Let's see what you can come up with. <coughs> What community do you value? Um, you know, what is the community you're inviting them in? There you go, they're popping up. Um, <coughs> what, uh, what do you value in your students? And then maybe what your uh, personal philosophy. So it doesn't matter where you start. Just click on the little plus sign and you can start writing. There you go, it's popping up. <coughs> And this will help you get started when, you, when we start building in Spark. You'll have some ideas that you want to include. And you're popping up as anonymous, you all, so don't worry about, you know, I don't want anybody to see my, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying. It's all anonymous. Uh, I created the Padlet that way. <coughs> if I didn't want it anonymous, you would have had to set up an account, which is free, but, you know, your name would have popped up at that point. <coughs> okay, there we go. More things are popping up. Here we go. So you see, it starts. It starts populating it as soon as people start typing in there. Active learning, project based, good. Everyone to spread. Here we go. So you see, you have some really good ideas. You know yourself <coughs> what community you you want to build for your students and what values you have. So go ahead and take a couple more minutes to type in there. And plus, this might be something that can help you. For those of you that aren't quite sure what to say, um, you know, this could be one way to, you know, this board can help inspire you to, to figure out what it is that you want to say. Because, you know, it's, for me, it's fairly easy to say, well, this is my philosophy, this is what I value, but I'm in education. Educators basically examine that all the time of themselves and others. But there are other fields that don't do this quite as easily. You, you never really probably con consider, well, what community are they? What is my philosophy of learning? You know, what, what, uh, so you may not have ever been asked this, but it is very important for students to kind of understand that perspective from you. <coughs> Okay, those are some good ones. Honesty, integrity. View yourself as a teammate, that's great. <coughs> and like I said, this, this, this only begins the whole notion of presence and community because obviously when you're teaching completely online, the instructor introduction starts it, but it's what you do with the rest of the semester, how you engage with them that continues that community and presence. So you need to, so whatever you said here, you basically need to keep up. You need to continually reinforce to the students that they are part of this community and that you're expecting this. And, uh, and so that gets reinforced in whatever interactions you have with them. Excuse me, how do you submit? I'm 
Oh, uh, once you finish typing, actually, you can just uh, click outside of it, and it'll oh. pop up. So yeah. So yeah, all you do is finish writing, and then click outside of it, and it'll, it'll pop up. <coughs> OK, there we go. Yeah, you actually don't need to do anything fancy. <laughs> I see some good thoughts going on in here. If you feel kind of shy about typing them here, you can type them somewhere else. a few good ones okay so you do have a good sense of what it is that you want your students to know about you the first you know first time they enter your class and, and they see you in a video uh, <coughs> And I'll, I'll keep this Padlet open if you want to access it later remember the password though because the password is going to remain on there <coughs> so you can get into it Okay, so, uh, so some of you have something to start with. So we're going to go ahead and start with Adobe Spark. Uh, so I'm going to start by saying that Adobe Spark is a completely free tool. Okay? It's, uh, it's available to anyone, um, and it comes with cloud storage, which means that everything you produce in Spark stays online. Okay, so you, don't, uh, you can actually download versions of it, like flat images of them, PDFs of some of these things. Of course, they lose some of the fanciness when you do that. But if you want to maintain them online, especially if you're working, uh, if you're doing an online course, you know, obviously the online link is going to be useful for you. Uh, <coughs> but it is completely free. Uh, all you need is an account for it. Um, as UTPA employees, uh, I know that the university purchased an Adobe Creative Cloud for all university faculty at the beginning of the, the fall semester. So if you missed that, that mm -hmm. announcement, you actually already have a login to Adobe that you're going to use today. So if you've never used it before, you know, today you'll, you'll inaugurate your, your Adobe Cloud, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, account. So this is what you're going to do. Okay, you can do one of two things. You can go to sparkadobe.com or you can try my fancy Adobe Spark QR code, which will take you directly to the same page. So either one will do. But if you want to grab an... an um, uh, you know, oh good, you have a, you have a laptop. If you want to use a laptop, you can use a laptop as well. Uh, Adobe Spark works, in, works online, it's web-based, but it also works, there is an app for these tools also on the iPad. They are currently working on the beta version of Android versions, so pretty soon uh, Spark will be available across all devices. Uh, but right now, but if you don't have, or if you don't like working on nitty bitty screens, you can always go online to adobespark.com. Okay. So if you're on this page, you're going to log in. You're not going to set up an account because you already have one. Uh, <coughs> so when you click login, you're going to do log in with Adobe ID because you have one. Log in with Adobe ID. It'll give you this. What you're going to do is what you always do when you log into my UTRGV. You're going to put in your UTRGV credentials. You're going to click enter, and it's going to redirect you to the institution's uh, login page. There you go. And then you, you're familiar with this one. <laughs> so then you log in here. Your usual credentials, same ID, same password. And now you get into Adobe Spark. <clears throat> Your view might be a little different than mine. If you've never used it, you probably see three spaces you see uh, you see post video and page for me I've created some samples I've been messing around with some things so I only get the plus sign in there you, have to download it first. you don't download at all you just log in 
Yeah, mine yeah. also is, I guess on a pad it would be different. Uh, oh, because it's got the app, because it's the, uh, the app, yeah, there's an app for it, yeah. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to download the app. But you should be able to, to work offline, online. Yeah, no, if you're, using, yeah, if you're using a mobile device, it always directs you to download an app, but I don't believe you have to. <coughs> And it works. So you, you don't have to download the app at all, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you click download, it's downloading the app, which is the same thing. Now, one of the things that I found that was really neat about Adobe Spark is that it looks almost identical on the device than it does online. So there is, because you know how some apps, when you have an app version of an application, uh, it, it's kind of a scaled down version of the full application. Uh, and so you get fewer tools, it's easier to use, that type of thing. But in this case, it's almost identical. So there is no, no um, really not much of a, of, a, of a difference in using one or the other. But you log in the same way. <coughs> OK, <coughs> so in the plus sign, if you see the plus sign or you see all three plus signs, you have three options. Uh, the Spark suite is actually three tools uh, that you can use separately and then integrate together. We're not going to use Post. Post basically is the one that you can create visuals with them, but you can get into all sorts of trouble with them. Not because it's hard to do. It's very easy to do. But you need to be very careful with alt text for the images. You'd need to download them uh, and then you know, add the alt text to them if you're doing them online. If you put them in here, they're not going to be accessible. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a video, and then we're going to embed the video in a page. So this is another way that you can actually do your introductory video. So go ahead and click video on here. I usually do my title last, I, I don't know why. <laughs> so you can skip the title, but it start, you know, notice how it started you off really easy. Okay? Every great story starts somewhere, tell us your idea or title. You can type whatever in there or you can leave it blank. You can always come back and change that. So I'm going to skip it. And then it asks you to pick a template. I usually pick the from scratch one because I don't want any built-in images on them, so I recommend you do that for now because we're building an instructor video, so we don't want anything extra in there right now. Just the basic, and, and it'll take a couple of minutes to, to bring it up. And if, uh, and if you're on Wi-Fi, it might take a little bit longer. <coughs> you can watch the welcome video if you want, but, or you can say, okay, I'm ready. But really, you don't need to watch it. This is a very, very easy tool to use. <coughs> Yes, uh, from scratch. Uh -huh. <coughs> this works a lot like a presentation software. Like, uh, you know, if you, if you attended uh, Arts and I class, uh, you know, course in the morning, the, the session, we used Keynote. So it works very similarly on this. That, uh, you know, of course, Keynote has a lot of fancy things in there as well that this one doesn't do. Uh, but it, but they're trying to kind of make this very, very easy. If you've used presentations, recorded presentations on PowerPoint, it's something similar. It works on a slide system, okay? So, so what you're going to find is that at the bottom of the page, and I know you can't see it here very well, the lighting's really bad, but on your screens you can see a, a blank one and you'll notice how it immediately pops up your menu in there. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to think about, okay, what do I do now? Because <laughs> it's, it's telling you, okay, do you want to put in a video, you want to add some text, some photo. Now, for the purpose of accessibility and to make sure that your videos, the videos you produce are accessible to your students, uh, you know, I always use the caption one. No, it doesn't caption for you, <laughs> okay? But the whole idea of the brainstorming previously, what we did before, is, is really to kind of get you into the habit of brainstorming what you're going to say before you turn on a camera and start talking. Uh, because some of the things that, that I mentioned, like community and values, you have to think about that for a little bit. So write it down. Create your transcript before you actually start recording. And you'll find that your recording goes a lot smoother that way when you do that. Uh, and plus, it's very easy to add your own transcript or your own captions to this. So for instance, so what is this does, all it did was it divided the screen into a photo and a, and a, and a so it's got two plus signs. So I could do this one or this one. This one is text because it's the caption. So what I could easily do is I could come back to my Padlet, whoops, copy that, come in here, paste it there, and of course I can subdivide it, I'm just trying to make a point here. 
Uh, and then your text would be in here and you can, you know, you can mess with that as well. You can do different themes. Let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Sage for now. Okay, you can uh, subdivide them. Like let's say I wanna do, uh, and one of the things that I find very useful personally when I'm doing this is that if I have the script right in front of me, I can just read it off the slide as I'm recording. You'll notice that there's a very conspicuous button right in the middle of there with a little microphone in red. That's your audio record. So you can add your audio. So you can, and of course, right now I've done a very, very basic thing. I haven't added any pictures. Everything is very blah. Uh, but, right, but I'm starting with just the utilitarian things, the things you need to put in there. So first it's your text, and now it's your voice. So on, an, on, a, on a mobile device, it's very easy because you use a built-in microphone. Uh, if you have the earbuds, you can do that too. Uh, for, if you're doing it on a computer, though, you probably need a, a speaker. I don't know if this one has a speaker. But all you do is you click and hold. Yeah, this one doesn't have a microphone, so it's not going to let me. But if you click, if you're on your own computer or on your own device, you click and hold the button. So basically, while you're recording, you're holding it down. So that's how you control, you know, your recording. So as soon as you finish talking, you stop pressing it, and it automatically records, and it records for that slide. So only what you have in there, you record it, and then you can just add another slide, and very easy to do. Just add another plus sign here and you have another slide right here and then you continue like that. So it's very simple to do, okay? So why don't you take a couple of minutes to, you know, a few minutes to play around with it, add some slides, add some text, uh, you know, play around with the themes. It does have some built-in images also, but you can also upload your own. Because I know what I do with mine is when I add a photo, of course, one of the photos that you need to upload is a photo of you so that your students know what you look like. <laughs> Uh, now, I, I'm a lot like art in that I don't like to appear on video when I'm video recording things. And so I, I feel a little bit more comfortable if it's just a still image of me and then I can just keep talking through the slides uh, and give them information. And then I may have other images on there. Uh, <coughs> but that's what I prefer to do. Um, but your voice is just as powerful as your picture, by the way, because your voice says a lot of things about you as well, including your tonality. Um, <coughs> but go ahead and play around with it. You can add photos in there if you want. They're very easy. Just click it and pick something. Okay. Let me know if any of you need some help. You got stuck somewhere. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when you said you're talking about doing a caption, you mean this mm -hmm. is yes. what you were talking about? Right, exactly. So you basically use that layout. And so on the bottom plus, you write, you write your text. Now on this one, these two pluses, oh, yes. that's where you click it and you write your text. And then on the top one, you can, uh, you can add an image if you want. And then in the middle, you can record voice over that slide. Okay. Oh, log in with Adobe. You are, are, you're, are you UT or GV faculty? Still? Okay, all right. So then you should log in with Adobe uh, and type in your UT or GV email. Okay, and then click enter. It'll redirect you. Oh, personal look. Do you have a personal account? Um, not that I know. Enterprise. Go ahead and click Enterprise. Yeah, no, you wouldn't know if you had one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have. There you go. So now you use the, your credentials again, and it should redirect you. Anybody need some help? I've also found icons useful. You can search for them. Uh, you can also actually upload your own video if you really do want to put a video of yourself in here. Although typically the way I, I view this using Spark Video is, well, I don't have a video of myself, so instead I want to record what's on the screen because I want to make sure I mention these important things. So then that's why I'm using video in this case. Uh, but you can also embed other videos. In her, kind of like the, uh, the keynote that, that we just saw a few minutes ago, she had several videos embedded into her presentation. You could also do that. I know that in, in, in past occasions, I've embedded a very brief video into the introduction for, uh, uh, I, I got a little silly with my ed tech class uh, two years ago because we were doing gamification. And so I put in a very brief clip from Star Wars for, for Yoda. It basically said, do or do not, there is no try. So I embedded that in there, <coughs> but it was making a point 
about my whole philosophy of that. You know, you're either here to do it or get out. So, you know, there, there is no try in here. <laughs> so, uh, but it was, it was a powerful message nonetheless, even though it was kind of cute and, you know, also showed my age. But, <laughs> but, but those kinds of things you can embed in there. And of course, it, it took me a while to find one that had the little caption, even though it was a very brief line. Because again, you have to be careful with accessibility. In this one, however, though, you could just as easily embed the video and then write the caption underneath. And for that one, it was a very brief one. It wasn't, he wasn't saying a whole lot, so I could just type it down there. <coughs> and all you do is keep adding slides in here. You can always play them back. You'll notice how it'll play it back for you. If I had sound, you'd be hearing the sound as well. So you can keep testing that, you know, until you're happy with it. So if I want to add a picture, I can find a free photo. Uh, just gonna find a kitten. There we go. That's a cute one. Uh, <coughs> so you see, you can just keep doing things like that. Okay. <coughs> and for the purposes of this particular recording, the background image is just decorative. Okay. Uh, you can also add additional images that are not uh, decorative. I know that what I've added as well. In some of my slides, when I do, the, I do the community, the philosophy, and the values, then towards the end, I tell them what the things they want to know immediately also. What are my textbooks? <laughs> you know, uh, when can I get, where do I start? So at the end, I mentioned these are the textbooks or the textbook you're going to use. I put an image of the book. I put the title on the bottom. Uh, and I record that as well as part, of the, as part of the slide. And then at the end, I add the image of now go to Blackboard and click on this link to start. Now, I, I mentioned that I prefer caption as, the, as the, um, you know, the preferred one because, I mean, the reason this is so easy to use is because it also has a few limitations. So if you pick the others, you can pick any of the others as well. The only problem is that if you pick one that doesn't have text, you may have difficulty with the, with the dialogue, with adding the caption in there for accessibility. However, if you've already written your own transcript, you can very easily attach the transcript separately. Kind of like what I did with this uh, when I showed you the Canva uh, you know, the image, the three, the three columns, I also told you there's a text accessible version of this. So that's what you would do in your own Blackboard as well. You know, watch my video or click on this if you just want to read it. So either one of those will work. <coughs> you go ahead and play around with it for a little bit longer. <coughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Click on the text. Let's see. Yeah. Go back here. You can oops, select theme music. No, where is it? Because there's also only a limited amount of things you can do with it. Here it is. Um, oh no, that's music. Text. I think what it does is it automatically changes uh, like the. It uses the font that is on the theme, and then it automatically, to a certain point, uh, also changes the size of the font as you go in there. Because it's not intended to have a lot of, a lot of so I would probably need to do this. Okay, I probably need to. Yes. Oops. Add it here. Yeah, because it has very few, but you'll notice how it adjusts the font because that's intended to, mm -hmm. to do that. There's more, there's more design features for the font in, in post, but post creates the font as a, um, as a flat image. So you can't really, it's not accessible. But yeah, but it does have, it does have limited, limited design features because it's supposed to kind of build it in very quick and easy uh, for those. <coughs> You'll notice also that there's a number right here at the bottom. It says 2S. Uh, it's calculating how long it's going to take you to run through this when you, once you start playing it. Uh, when you add audio, it becomes a little more exact with that because the audio actually goes on a, on a, on a particular timeline. And so it counts the seconds that the audio is in. 
uh, but once you have once you have that, it starts increasing the, the 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 numbers on there, so that you know more or less how long your video is running as you're creating it. Okay. Now, now the things that you're adding to this video, of course, they're not going to be that exhaustive. You know, an introductory video shouldn't be more than two to three minutes long. Um, one and a half is probably an ideal size because really you you don't want to have your students first thing, you know, start off with a huge lecture by you. <laughs> okay. So it has to be very very brief. <coughs> I have until 2.20, right? Yes, you're still good. I'm still good? Okay. <coughs> now, I've also added music. I've, I've found that the music is actually surprisingly good in here. Like, um, well, this one doesn't have the, the audio, so I can't really, can I play? No, I can't. No, I can't hear it. But it will play music, and it will, and you can even level the music because I know I've had background music playing as I'm talking as well, and so you can lower the volume on the music so that it doesn't drown out your voice. And you know, and the good thing about it is that you record your voice, and then you add the music, and that way you can make the distinction when you hit play. Then you can determine whether the, that music is drowning you out or not. Uh, and if it is, then you can just you just adjust the volume, and then that'll 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 work out just fine. So, um, <coughs> so you can add these, and you know these are pretty good selections. You know, most most of these software don't have the extensive collection of audio and, and uh, sound that this one does. For a free version, this is pretty good, actually. Okay, so now you have, because you're doing this for an online class, um, you know you want what you're going to do is you're going to have to share it. Uh, so this is video. Uh, the way you the way you have something ready. Let's say this is ready, and it's clearly not right. I'm just messing with it. Uh, you can do a preview of it. It'll show you what it looks like and how it's changing the slides um, and all that. And it automatically does an attribution to any any images that you create that you added in there, which is really neat because uh, you know you also have to be careful with copyrights and that type of thing. And so it tries to search out. So when you use images, it tries to search out basically the images that you can use that have the right attribution in there. And so that's a really neat feature that that they have up here. That they actually that they actually are able to tell you you know add this as part of the creation tool, uh, so <coughs> you can download this, which is not recommended, <laughs> because then you can either you you know you download a file, because what you really want to do is you want to share it, okay, so right now it's preparing it, um, and then it shows you it downloads an MP4 video, which is really neat because MP4 is very versatile. You can upload it to Blackboard. You can you can use it in multiple contexts, although of course Blackboard does not, or Colt does not recommend that you upload all these videos <laughs> into the into the system. But you can put them on YouTube. Yes, embedded. you can. Mm -hmm. That would not be a problem. Or we can put them on the streaming server for you. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. Maybe it'll play it. Well, it's right now. It's on the last slide. Let's start in the beginning. Yeah, because I think I put there. Yeah, click there and then play it. Oh, there it is. So yeah, and since I only put it, and the thing is it works slide by slide. So it'll only put it in the slide that you added the music. So you could keep changing the music if you want, uh, and it'll, it'll last through, through that. And it'll also adjust the, the, the amount of time that it took you. So if you recorded your voice and it was 10 seconds, it'll keep looping the music. So it won't stop when it's over. Uh, so that's kind of a cool feature. Thank you, George. I hadn't, no I, I hadn't thought about it. it. Yeah, so, uh, so essentially you can do that. So what you really want to do, though, is you want to share it. Uh, you can give it a title, my introduction, uh, <coughs> and I usually just select education from the drop down here. You can add a subtitle if you want. Uh, you do want this on as the author. What that basically means is that do you want people to know that you created it? In other words, it'll, it'll have your name on it. <coughs> okay. Once you do that, you create the link. So if you download the MP4 video, then you have to add it to YouTube yourself. If you instead create the link, you can just use this link and directly link it into Blackboard. Okay. So now what I do, if you want to get a little fancier, because I mentioned and I know we're running out of time, you can embed this video into a Spark page, which make, gives it a little bit extra, you know, pizzazz. <laughs> but you can just as easily use this video just like this. Yes, sir. And can you create like pages? Web pages? You can create single pages, yes. In fact, let me show you the, the other one. 
So I'm going to copy this link real quickly that I just created on video. So it's copied, hopefully it's copied. Copy. Okay. So now I go back, click on the SP up here. I, you can't see it actually, but on the upper left-hand corner you have an SP. Click on the SP, it takes you back to your project. And on the plus sign, now add page. So when you click on page, this creates a web page, a single page. Okay. So, and, um, and this is where you can add your video also. So this one can get a little fancier. Uh, like uh, my instructor introduction and then I can add a theme I can add a photo let's see uh, photos okay and then I can add my video in here and then you'll notice how it's add embedded video. So I paste the link that I just created for my Spark video. And there's my video on the page. And so you'll notice that you can add a few more things to this. So it makes it a little fancier. You can add subtitle. You can add a few more things. You can, like the button right here, you can create links to other things. So it creates one continually scrolling page, scrolling page. So it's a very easy tool. If you don't know how to code, if you don't know how to create HTML documents, it's, what, it's an easy way to create an HTML, uh, 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 basically a web page, because that also will create a link. So what will happen is you're going to share it the same way you shared the video. You're going to pick your category. I always pick education, and then it has the attribution there. I put it on for the author, and then create link. And then it gives you several options here. Um, <coughs> I always uh, grab the link. So it's creating the link. And you'll notice that you can post it on Facebook, on Twitter. You can send it by email. I like to do the embed code because that one I can use in Blackboard so that it can embed the screen. And it does it more like in an iframe, actually. It, it's it the, yeah, it kind of scrolls through it. So it's, it's I mean, it's still, I, I still prefer that over, you know, just the link. If you just want to use the link, then you don't do the embed. You do the, oops, no, no, you don't do email, sorry. <laughs> it'll just create a regular link right here. And all you do is copy it, and then you can put it in Blackboard, wherever it is that you're going to have it. You can put it on WordPress. You can put it on, uh, you know, wherever it is that you're hosting your, your, your course, you can put it on there. But, it creates, but it, it creates your link already made for you, so you don't have to add or find a hosting service for you to put it in. It's already there in the cloud. Uh, for the, because uh, UTRGV has a, um, thank you, George. <laughs> Because UTRGV has a Creative Cloud account, you get, I think, about 100 gigabytes of memory to store up there. So when you're creating videos, you can create up to that amount. Uh, Spark is also free to other people who don't have a Creative Cloud account, and they only get two gigs. So you get a few more. <coughs> but you get this and plus a whole bunch of other stuff that is not what we're going to talk about today. So I know we're out of time. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your help. <coughs> and thank you all for attending. Don't I forget to fill out the evaluations and thank you all so much for, for being here. Yes, thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.